Hello. Uh, the sound of the Deering Tenbrooks that I've got here is a, just a wonderful, rich, deep sound, which is what attracted uh, me to that sound in the first place. Uh, one of my students had one of these things, and I always like to check out someone else's banjo, and I played it, and I was ooh, this is nice. It has that really rich, full sound. And um, I've got a pre-war flathead master tone from 1932, and I'm not saying this sounds exactly like that, but those kind of banjos have a deeper, richer sound. And uh, so that's the kind of sound I'm looking for these days. And uh, this Deering Saratoga Star Tenbrook's banjo has all that sound and more. So I'm, I'm really happy with the sound of it, and I've used this banjo on my Double Banjo Bluegrass Spectacular album, and uh, more recently on my Territory album. And uh, I'm just going to play a tune right now so you get to hear how this thing sounds with the Swiss tone ring. This is one called the East Tennessee Blues. do you use? The string gauges. I've got uh, 10, 11, 13, 22, 10. Great. And do you have a, how, how do you like it set up? What head tightness? How do you set your banjo up? I have my head, my uh, head banjo head tightened to an, uh, an A note. And uh, set up wise, I've got, um, I had another bridge put on here by one of your competitors, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know the exact height because it's a radius fingerboard, so it's a radius bridge. Um, and beyond that, that's, you know, the action's not particularly, it's not that high, I, kind of, I like it not too low, not too high, somewhere, somewhere in the middle so I can do intricate stuff, but also have a little bit of the power for, uh, for the bluegrass playing. And when you first got it, how, how was it when you first got your banjo? What was your reaction to it when it first arrived? Uh, I love the sound of the banjo when it first arrived. It had a really big open sound and that sort of thing. And it's changed because I play it all the time and I put a lot of mileage on it. So it's just got a slightly different sound, not better or worse, just different, but still a lovely sound. And it's nice because you can make uh, really nice sounds with more uh, slower, sweeter kind of tunes or you can blast in a bluegrass kind of way. and it, it, it accommodates all those different feels really nicely. And, and particularly with the slower, prettier kind of things, because you can make pretty music on a banjo. Uh, it really is nice because it does have that rich sound and just kind of fills out the space. I have a new album called Territory, which is on the Smithsonian Folkways label. And it uh, started out as a solo album with 12 solo cuts featuring this banjo. and. Then I decided to take some double banjo things that were supposed to be on my double banjo bluegrass spectacular album, but they just didn't quite fit into the bluegrass realm. A tune with Pete Seeger, one with Mike Seeger, one with Bill Evans, uh, Bruce Molsky, and uh, anyway, put a bunch of those tunes, five of those tunes, on the Territory album, and started realizing there's not really any bluegrass on here, so uh, I recorded four tunes in the bluegrass mode with a band I play with up in the New York City area, and threw those on there, and there's the album. Here's a song from uh, my Double Banjo Bluegrass Spectacular album on Rounder Records, and it's called Escher's Waltz. <laughs> Thank you. 
actually have this brand new album, at least as of this taping, or one and zeroing, or whatever's going on in that machine I'm looking at, and uh, a new album called Hill Country, which actually is an old album because it came out originally in the uh, early to mid 80s. It's a bluegrass album. This is a tune that was perhaps going to end up on that album, but didn't, so it doesn't have a name, but it's a fairly bluegrassy kind of tune. You get to hear how a driving banjo sound comes out of this instrument. Thank <laughs> you. 